Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome to another exciting and everything amazing propaganda cast from your host, Imperial Dane, the one, the only master propaganda hero psych defender of the fatherland. Off here to one versus one owner. Crossing in the woods in the north, it's Huron Barter Town. Fighting for the Soviet Union, Socialism, Comrade Stalin. And the sixth tank corps in the south, it is Job. Fighting for the Wehrmacht, Germany, Deutschland. Rolling out here with the 3rd Panzer Division, we got Blitzkrieg, we got German Infantry, we got Jaeger Armour with triple infantry bullets left for Job versus Advanced Warfare, hello, Shot Rifle and got Motor with Double Mine and we got Anti-Tank Guns bullets and specifically though for the M42 which he's got absolutely none of. Exciting. Sandbag said by the Kopf on his Job is clearly worried about getting hit there by the Kopf and also the kids is going to hit westwards there for the fuel there. Who run Bartertown heading eastward? Similarly, though, of course, he can't lay down sandbags. He's also going for the special rifle command there with the penal troops here versus Jove and the Wehrmacht. Less common versus the Wehrmacht, but still not uncommon either. There, some players still prefer conscripts with Molotovs or, you know, support weapons. But either way, though, penal troops certainly are strong, so they likely also end up seeing a bunch of users with the Wehrmacht. Pioneers heading westwards here, penal troops got almost down there for. To uh, run a barter town. Wing West was there. Sandbag going up here by the victory point of former defensive point. Oh, decides against it. MD40 being hauled forward. It's going to be sending eastwards there for Job. Interesting opening. We've got Scar Cup here for who run barter town, which, is going to, which will prove to be a bit of a problem here for Job in the West since he's got none of his grenadiers there. He is likely not anticipating the Scar Cup move there. Although I suspect he'd be keeping the Gundy as close as the remaining forces because he could risk his machine gun here getting swarmed and possibly being wiped out by the scout cover if he's too slow to get it out of there. Gundy is there, halfway done for Job, almost got the same nations point. Who run Bartertown setting out slowly and we got guard mode here for Who run Bartertown setting out for guardsmen, hay mortars, T-35, self repairs and of course mark vehicle, a nice flexible doctrine. Not quite as popular as of late, at least I don't want to see as much used, but it's still, of course, very strong and solid. But maybe it lacks a bit of flash compared to others. First engagement here, Pilch was going for the cup on there, Gunnadies nearby, and there goes Skarka here in the west, MD42 opening up in it. Pioneers nearby, but it's a bit of a sticky spot here, the MD42 can't quite hit it due to the trees there and the hedges blocking line of fire. Third Gunnadies going away for Joe, Pilch was going to be here. Pulling up behind the heavy cover, he's laid down. Maybe forcing up to switch over to trying to deal with that scout car. Bold move there. Gonna these continue these to engage the engineers there by the eastern field point. So Job is not letting himself be distracted. Third, gonna these what they've done. As who run by the town is locking off from fuel and there go. We're paying up the scout car. Pioneers retreating here. Low in health, low in numbers. More gonna these moving in there as the others are dealing here with the east. So that way, form up more numbers here to deal with. Who run bats around the fuel point there? Scout cars going to deal with the MD42, punishing Joe here again if he doesn't get out of there fast. No flame for us at at least. That's a small mercy there for Joe and the German army. The appeals are being slowly guarded by the Gunnadies, and there go MD42 is retreating. Did a bit of damage as the M3A1 scout car. And quick pops up to these. The Gunnadies have pushed back. The engineers successfully successful with the suffering. Minimal cash, in fact, minimal damage. So good work there by Joe. Pilons were hit right by the car point, but the West here is lost to the Red Army, at least for now. Bunker up for Jove, no sign of tech up. Might be he's got something else planned. Gonna be going for the center victory point. Back here we got medics up there for who run Barter Town, noting he's actually got very little in terms of units and infantry. He's very much relying a lot on the scout car at the moment to sort of the, be the big threat there to Jove and the Germans. Jove taking up. Who run Barter Town reinforcing, but no additional infantry, no tech up from him either. But it might be he's actually trying to uh, go for a very bold strategy where he basically just stalls somehow and just begins spamming guardsmen. Not that I'd recommend it, but it does seem to be what Who Run Barter Town is playing at, which is incredibly ballsy. And very much relies on the scout could just acting as a sufficient return for Joe to act, you know, poke hard enough at who run by town to realise, hang on, he's stalling for guard and then just you know try and swarm us as fast as possible. You can build a like to make a nice company and send again now that fast would be helpful. Of course there's a lot of gas and two to twos would fall a bit short, but the pentagon of these could work out here nicely for Job, who has yet to choose a doctrine. 
stacking up then getting done these more gunners ring up here for Joe and Germany Pioneers reinforce hit but that like to make a nice company there you go happens right then and there Gunners over the M3A1 more moving westwards over the MD42 Others retreating back for a bit of light healing. I know these continue eastwards. They got pills to waiting. And definitely, he's playing so much manpower. I definitely think he's just now trying to somehow stall and then just spam guards. But again, very bold strategy. And again, he's very much reliant on Job not realizing what the devil's going on and assuming he's got more than he actually has on the field already. Otherwise, again, Job could easily punish him. But again, if Job doesn't know, he can't, you know, take steps to counter this. Aggressive harassment there by Hugon Baratan. Nice little play there. Scout care flanking the Gundies. Will Joe realize what's going on? Will he catch on to who run Bartitan's ruse? His bluff, his deception? So far, the answer seems to be no. Seizing points in the West MG42. The Gundies hit to the turn away there for Joe and the German army. The 2 2 2. I like to punch the wagon based off a civilian car design from before the war. Fun fact there. And wouldn't last that long into the war before they switch over to another armored vehicle since the 2 to 2 was not very good off road. In the actual war, by the way, I still remember the one guy, but it's good off road in game, you know. That's called game design and balancing. But, anyways, the actual 2 to 2 was not very good off road, and long term they began switching towards, well, bigger armored cars for the 8 wheels, or the Achtrad, or 250 half tracks, which would be switched away from being reconnaissance half tracks, you know, well, in that sense, you know. Transports and begin being uh, shifted over to armored car production, known as the 250C. Punting on this squad filling up there for Joe, very good, so good. Grand back the western fuel points, almost got both munitions points, which can help a bit. Then, particularly, lays down some tail mines versus his opponent. We got light machine guns up there, Joe, there without a doctrine here. Who run part of town is taking up, good. And he's realizing he has to spend his resources on something if he's not going to get more infantry while he waits for the gasman to arrive in. Massive droves to do going to finish in the M3 one But again, Joe really seems to not quite be clear about it. And there you go. Gasman can finally begin arriving here for who run by the town. Immediately adding the DP light machine guns and roughly less than about well about 20 seconds you can call in another one and it'll call in another one at least, I imagine. So out of the way. The cheeky strategy there, but Joe has now managed to seize most of the map. He's got all the victory points as well. He can lay down mines as well if he wants to, which would be a good idea. Do have mines for us at the Who Run Battle Center. He's not going to be completely caught off guard there by any mines. There's still a few mines here and there. Could prove to be, you know, worthwhile there for Joe. And the third Panzer Division. T7 the way they can call him. There we go. More guardsmen. So yeah, he was very much playing for a guards stall strategy. You don't see that very often. Joe over there adding more Panzer Grenadiers, putting up to two Panzer Grenadiers. Of it's going to be a lot of elite infantry, which is definitely going to be, I think, helpful here. Plus, in a pinch, can be equipped with Panzer Shreks. Back here, troops are reinforcing. T-70 almost down there for Hulon Barnetown. He's going to lightly eat Panzer Shreks because he's only got the 2-2. Two two. And as we've uh, so far ascertained, I don't think he's been laying down any mines. Anyways, two guard squads, both equipped with DP light machine guns. <laughs> Taking squat they're done as well for Joe, putting out five hundred squats by the way. A solid amount of infantry be on the higher end, but still not too much either. Gunners and the T Sims are not really doing any damage, obviously. No panzer here yet for Joe. Part of the is to be going elsewhere. Light machine guns, in fact. And he's actually laying down mines. Very good. Bit late there to the party, but better late than never. And the worst take on this was engineers got marks moving in. If you can take them out, it can definitely remove any threats to the telemines. It's using the two to screen there. Perhaps giving him time there to you know, get away with it. And these guns are being slowly pushed out by the T-70 more guard from getting there. Go another march was caught here for who run Bada Town. He definitely does not want to encounter any mines. In particular, telemines could, you know, really ruin who run Bada Town. So there you go, third guard squad putting out a three then. Telemines head off. Shame there for Joe. Still, he suffered negligible casualties during that engagement, so works out in the end for Joe there. 
and he's still got most of the map and he's definitely got a big two point lead here over who run party town so filling out with a pack 40 here might want to take out after that and bring out some punches versus who run party town and the sixth tank core pack 40 almost on there for joe and there we go we got blitzkrieg doctrine not sure why i went for that here but i mean pan tactician is good Air reconnaissance is useful, command panthers can be useful, and of course, you know, stupid close air support is always handy, but that's always, it always felt to me like a bit more of a, you know, it's there, dark, and it doesn't really have any sort of specific focus or purpose, it's just a mishmash of abilities at times it feels like, so I don't know. Guards from there, pushing back the panthers, got the two zooming up, he backed up, and more kind of these flat machine guns, further panzer gonna deal arriving here for Job, gonna these holding up here versus some of the engineers, pushing them back. And there you go, we got Triple Guardsman, he's tearing at that 2-2-2, two, two, two. Panzer's moving forward, take a new thing like they can as well there. Using no cover here, who run part of the Supreme, confident that he's got enough numbers to not have to worry about cover. Looks like one of his guard squads has not been upgraded yet with DP light machine guns, but uh, he just needs to grab a point with them or get them to you know, his own territory, he can get that. So he's all being taken up with the T-70, and there you go, wiped up a little blow there to Job and the third Panzer that's shown. Penal troops now around to the scene as well as more fire pipes being delivered straight at Who Run Bandit Town. Pack 40 moving up. Now he's quickly shifting over to observation. Probably to avoid running into any sort of sneaky Germans with anti tank guns. Joe always had to take further up. Definitely shall think prioritize that. Dash hitting the dirt for increased accuracy. That's a rate of fire can't run but all the way. A bit of boost there to offensive firepower. There we go. Joe launching a pants gun with the assault here, almost taking out the gas there, and we go. Wiped out. Nice work there by Joe. More gas on the quickly there to replace who run Batatan's lost gas. We got Pinch there with a the light machine gun picked up from the dead gun it is. That's definitely a bit uncomfortable there for Joe and the third pants of Sean. Definitely a nice tactical win there for who run Batatan. Back forward at the end of fire from it. Guardsman can't see the T7, the other has to be forced back off the field him before we need to retreat. Back at base, we got Job there taking up. Say good, say good. With more grenades on the way there for Job. Not to say more Panzer grenades. Triple Panzer grenades, I think, would have been rather aggressive there for Job and could, in some cases, been effective. Particularly with a good flank, I mean, three Panzer grenades squad to be able to lay down a serious volume of lead. To the two sneaking a few shots there, moving up the east side, realizing that it's actually open. Good read there, though, of course, this west side is open as well there to who run Bartertown, who's clearly making a go for that one. It seems like they're shifting sides to the map once more. Joe still maintains a healthy leader who run Bartertown. And he's moving forward, slot machine up. They got there, taking out far from the altar cannon and the two, two um, the gun it is there. T is taking a nice hit from the pack 40. West Sun is being almost lost entirely to run by the time with little resistance there from Jove. As Jove is certainly playing very cautiously, his tech should be almost done, if not already. Yup, he can build his former core and should definitely prioritize getting that one out as fast as possible. As for who run by the time, we've yet to see any sort of actual sign of further tech. I imagine his dog's uh, going to be the mechanized armor company, just hauling out as many T 3485s as he possibly can here against Jove. Guards on that push back. Heading east was the Pentagon via Pioneer. Got the two children to serve them. Dying your repairs. You might want to bring up another Pioneer squad just to repair, uh, build stuff and repair and lay down some mines. Pentagon is just going to these moving in here, here, but with the limited anti tank support, they're going to be quite vulnerable to the T 70. And with that an MG42, they've been quite vulnerable here to any sort of the chunks of guard from this. going to get off a really good rough grenade, which isn't impossible, but. Uh, it's going to be a bit tricky as well. There you go, Gunny's playing from the south, pushing back here, who run Bartons Guardsman. Deciding that is not a worthwhile engagement. These points they're secured. To just go need some repair season points as well. Many mines, nine. And there you go, T70 back on the job, and Gunny's almost wiped out. And we got mines to protect any pursuit into who run by on space. Nice 
Move there. Also indicates he's worried about base raids there by Jove. Gasping penal was coming up, unleashing a hailstorm of light machine fire. The Panthers there who stand no chance, exposed on their own with no backup weaponry. Pagan gun this coming the center back hit. Lots of troops healing and forcing. Still no sign of any tech yet there for Jove. To do trying to get away here as so it realized the situation is pretty hazardous here. Troops almost good to go, can make another push here for the Western Fuel and try and reclaim that. So Pormacor though is uh, some time off still. It would seem, then again, he might just begin building it once the Pioneers finally head back. Gasp and Pumes moving eastwards. Bit of a standoff situation there for Jove. He seems a bit more quiet, and there you go. Mechanist, I'm a company up there. Who run? By the time we got every constant for Jove, that's going to tell him possibly that his opponent is actually taking outwards there, and he's going to need to bring out his own Panzer soon. Are we nice use there of the ability? Not the German slow would you primarily use I believe the Feast of Stock for such reconnaissance moves, not a Stuka. No note there. The Feast of Stock being a much smaller aircraft that sort of further for that purpose also used to transport officers about and the likes. Back here, it's a Palmer called down for Joe to go for the Panther 4 though. If he's expecting guards. You know, motor, and he's seeing this. He should figure T 3045s and the thing is, Panzer Falls are not particularly good against them. I mean, T 3045s only cost a fraction more than the Panzer Four, but they have more health for starters. Plus, a bit more armor than the T 34s and the 6, and you know, it's good gun. So, that kind of means the Panzer Four, particularly due to the health, is not particularly well matched against the Jove. We'll need Stugs and say, there you go, Stug on the way. Say good, say good. Definitely the right move here. And. I suspect that's spurred on there by the reconcile flight again figuring hang on my opponent's going for that motor most likely meaning if I go for a panzer 4 my panzer 4 will be destroyed by the T-34 at least that's assuming the fault process there so Stuk's going to be much better choice here Big assault here in the MG42 position in the east. Joe is certainly looking a bit struggling here. And of course, we'll need to bring up a second Stu to back up the first round, which probably can sort of really put some pressure on the T 3045s and can then sort of bring up whatever armor he wants otherwise. He'll go for Ospins, he'll go for Panzer Fours. You can also just go for more Stu's. T is going for the Panzer going to stand in the center. Unleashing Hell with its 45mm gun. And there you go, who run by the time is going straight for the T-35. We got the Stuk 3G out here for Joe. Turning him out here, pinwheel machine being added. So good, gas gun from the Stuk. Stuk trying to hit the gasman. Without the machine gun, it's going to be a bit tricky there to deal with them. Plus the gasman have a reasonable high rate of fire. So they actually do hit a lot of damage to the Stuk there. Even this a shot somehow, you know, managed to bounce, he'll still get, do deflection damage. The Stuke here just needs to get out of there, Joe Stuke is almost down. He's pretty bad loss here in the early game, but to lose the Stuke that quickly. Um, early game, you know, this only into its lifespan. T-35, 85, almost down there for who run by the time. The West, we got Pack 4 there being almost taken up. The Gaspin, Pans are going to be there, falling back as well. Having to call the Western Fuel Point. Double pioneers for Joe, but oh, just one pioneer squad. He definitely needs more pioneers, I think. 432 versus 228. Joe getting access to the command tank. I mean, with the pair of Stukes, that'd be a pretty solid, I think, addition there. Might help the Stukes are a bit longer in certain engagements. And then there you go. T3485 out there for Hulgan Bad Town. So name because it was T-3045 with an 85mm gun, or T-34 with an 85mm gun. They also existed after the way, I think, 122mm gun version. At least there was an attempt at it, but the gun was basically too big for the turret and the tank for that matter. They were fun fact there, but they tried. And before it's almost taken out. Punch gun is under fire from the T-34-85. Pack 4 landing a nice side hit there on the T-34-85. 
penetrating the armor of the tank. Tisa now has been fixed up there again for Jove. Back here, troops team reinforcing. Stu is still in dining repairs there. That did not take a uh, take kindly to all those guards and firing up with anti tank rifles. Though technically, in the actual war, they would have struggled with that since the Stu's front armor was 80mm, the summit part was actually so slightly sloped. Additionally, it was not uncommon for the driver's side of the Stug, roughly about here, to be reinforced with concrete to protect that particular bit of it. Little fun fact there. T something close to the east of the Panzer, I think, just need to retreat. There you go, pack forward, landing a nice hit there. Piercing the T-70's armor with ease. Oh dear, he's about to lose those pantagons. That was definitely not a good move there by Joe. That was a pretty bad one, actually. Then East would see it. Could hit the fuel point there and again, but he's losing the Western fuel point there to who run Barton's Guardsman. Maximum always his back tech for this bomb company and not bring up machine guns, so means he's actually going for every single structure. Stug moving in. He's gone for a Panther as well. Yeah, I'd recommend double Stugs before going for anything else, and Stugs work really well in pairs. Plus, it just increases your chance of taking out some armor really fast, which is, you know, also pretty good. He's gone for the Panther Ball and Lightning Mag, and here's the infantry pressure that's causing Gerb to go for a Panther Ball here. There you go, Assault the Gasman taking up Petra with a single shattering hit. Adding a pin up machine and they're gonna swing in as well. They're guarding in the dirt, need to be careful. Theoretically, just try and drive over them since they can't get out of the way of a tank if they're sort of using that to hit the dirt move. But obviously, who would have bought would run away, but you know, it'd be fun if you actually managed it. Push into the east, push for the center here. Job is finding his lines crumbling here beneath who run Bartertown's sledgehammer blows. Oh, he's losing the Panzer here to the T-70 A slow by the way. Very accurate. Good rate of fine, good mobility, and there you go, wiped out. Quite a blow there to Job to swim before to holding up the right flank now. Panzer on the west not doing much. Stuka seeing repairs. And we got another MG42 there for Job. To replace it seems the lost Panzer Grenadier. T-45, the T-10 moving in these sub gunners, panther fast on the T-10, which is great here, but the problem is he can't stop the T-45 with that. And who run Bartertown is very well aware of that detail. Forcing of course, Joe to commit his armor from the west to the east, but can he around in time, and uh, will it matter? Because who run Bartertown theory just get away, unless of course he just charges straight towards the center and right into Joe's counterattack force here. Stuke hits, panther four misses. Panzer full fixed, troops sitting out there. And this was Guardsman. Could pop off a rock grenade here, but it might easily be dodged here. Panzer full being fixed, so the problem should prioritize the Stunger. Should still only one Pioneer squad here for Joe, by the way. Still one Pioneer squad. I think he'd go for two by now. I mean, he's got two armor pieces, plus the two, two. And simply put, one Pioneer squad is not going to be enough to keep those repaired at any decent pace. Notably, of course, Hulan Parton needs has two engineers from his start, so he can easily repair his armor fast up, and even then, if he needs to, he can always just pop crew self repairs as well on top of it just to increase the repair speed further. That definitely feels like there could be a bit of a problem in joke for Joe in the long gun if the match goes on. It's already turning into a bit of a long gun there, for the looks of it. T-55 going here, Stuke shoots, penetrates the armor of the T-55 there with ease. Pumps from him, big express blame before two. Gasman being slaughtered by the Panther for nine kills, close to Vexen to one. And there we go, Joe goes for more pioneers, but needs to get the T of Panther out there before Kudan Bartatan's armor shatters it. Stug moving in there. No more hits, and there you go, T for the Number two on the way to Kudan Bartatan and the Red Army. More tanks that way. Gun listening with engineers in the east, slowly cutting them down there with light machine gun fire. Panther 4 need repairs, MP4 to current at the western point. Stug on the scooter to go to the two being fixed up. Back here, troops in reinforcing there for Job. 
And go T for the far flanking. Got air support called in by Joe, but I fear this is not going to matter. We got the pack 40 setting up there. If you can get off a target weak point, the Panzer faster, it might matter. Missed there. No target weak point, though. No, no, no target weak point. Air support, they should be able to take it out. If you can sort of just get a bit of line of sight on it. Looks like they're this. Oh, there we go. MD4 Tom saying that's too, they're too slow to get in there. And the T-35 that survives the encounter here with the Luftwaffe. Uh, suffering some light damage, but it's still operable. Stu charges hit, we got guards quickly moving to block the path, but gets over hit in the turn east on the T-70 light tank. Stu needs to carefully quick gets around by the guardsman. So then end up being two hundred munitions there, doing very, very, very little there for Joe. He should have probably called in slightly better there, might have had a better chance, but in the end, it flubbed and uh, who won part of the time's T-345 survived. Bit of a shame there for Joe. I think if he tried for a target weak point there with a pack 40, he might have just been able to stop it there, but that's just me. Graham the Eastern Victory Pony, we got 425, that's 146. Joe Sellers lead, and he's going for all Panzer Force here. That definitely feels like a wrong choice to me there. As I definitely feel like he should be committing to more Stugs here versus the T 45s. Double Panzer Force just feels a bit wrong. Basically needs more firepower to help deal with the T 45s much higher health on the Panzer Falls. Just don't have that. Additionally, they don't have the uh, range and penetration as well of the Stugs. So they just more consistently do a lot of damage to the T 45s. Who run part on that could actually soon go for third one. And if he does that, I mean, the double Panzer Falls definitely could be a big problem there for Job. A big mistake. He might get the T 70 here, though, which would be huge, though, for Job. Pop goes to the weak, we got Mark Hill here on the Panther Fort. T-45 lands a nice hit, gaining Betty 2 in the process. Good work there, Stu Kibbers, the T-45 in the east, a bit on, this, on the center, a bit isolated here. Going for target weak point here, Pack 40 joining in the front. Sadly, it's not the tar pack target weak point he's using, there we go. Blinded a bit. Close to 52, they've got the Panther Fort joining in. Can he take out here, who run part of town's T-45? No one gets away there. Close one here for Joe, but not quite. Aircraft almost crashed into the Panzer IV. That was a close one. That was a very close one. Parts of the retreating troops are healing and forcing. Garsman holding forts here, backed up by the Maxim. And right here, I don't know what happened with Job. He just sent in a Panzer IV, actually on its own, unsupported. Mm. And as you can see, the Hunan Barton just takes it out because, obviously, I'm not in touch with what happened with Job. My best guess is it was a misclick. My worst guess would be just for some reason had a really bad idea and executed it. We got punished, obviously, for it. Panzer IV, the Vector two, but that's definitely just an easy kill there. He needs to get up more Stukes here to have a chance. Again, Panzer IV in the current situation, but now he's lost one. And uh, who don't pass the to bring up more T for the just got not gonna cut it. He's gonna need more Stugs to have a chance of this. A lot more Stugs. He still got the two to two though, which is nice that ace level. But Joe. T for Fives have seen some light repairs, Panther Fob seeing repairs as well. Stug just hanging back here carrying the center. Joe Sen feels a lot more defensive, he's not attacking as much as I feel like he could. He's also not trying to pressure who run Bada down. I mean he's got him down on victory. Points of the threat here, of course, Joe could just try and bleed him up. The more he does place, you know, passively he doesn't try to inflict any deeper casualties on Who Run Bartan, the more time Who Run Bartan has to build a force to maybe crush Jove. We just wait for Joe to make another mistake like that, Panzer Vor. Oh, wait, T-3045 sending out. He can soon go for a third one. He's got the fuel for sure. He just needs some manpower. Stug moving in. Close to the up in the open. Being absolutely annihilated here by the T-3045s. Stug moving flanking there. Very, very close to the T-2 though, by the way. Got this under fire. Stug hanging back. And they got the pills on the negative cover. So Stug could try and deal with it using a machine gun. 
the lane. There we go, T3485. Number three on the way, the Who Run Baratan and the six tank core. Pants for landing, next to the hit there. But it's about to engage here by the veteran T4 to 45. Landing a solid hit there. Stug shoots misses, but it is uh, Veteran Tuna. It has the shirts and added. Which at least makes it look cooler. In theory, it also gives an armor buff, but it still has less armor than a Panther 4 with that. And it also gains a small bonus like rate of fire. Overall, it doesn't really do that much, though, except again, just make it look cooler. That's really the biggest benefit from Veteran 2. It looks cooler. Attack 40 flanking in again in the east level. Very nice there for Joe. Increased rate of fire, increased penetration. Not the best of the T-35, so he needs much more penetration on the pack 40, but the rate of fire definitely is going to help him a lot. Hudan Baratan, by the way, splitting up his tanks a lot. He might just want to concentrate them for a bigger armor to push there versus Hudan Baratan. He could also consider some uh, mortars to back up, and oh dear, another light machine gun dropped, another gun is called there extinguished. Oh no. Penal troopers now with double light machine guns, double MG 42s. We are losing supplies to the enemy. Back here, troops in reinforcing. Got the double MG 42 that penal troopers in there. Can use on the fire from the T 45. Stoop entered is opening up the penal troopers there with a double light machine gun action. Panther 4 they needing repairs. I think Job is just going for another Panther rather than more Stugs. Big gas push in the north, machine gun wiped out. Another blow there to Job. Stug slightly falling back here to the person of the gas and then to tank rifle. He's got one kill so far with the Stug. They're using his machine guns maybe or his main gun. Oh, an infantryman died. T-44 is going to pressure hit Job at the edge of his base. I mean, he's barely got any control of the map now. Who run Bartertown is running the show. It would seem. Cabo shattered. Stuart there hammering away at the advancing T-44. Panther 4 needs to reposition. Stuart taking heavy damage. Panther 4 is also slow there. Pack 4 needs to open up with a target weak point. Hope for the best here. No target weak point here. Though Stuart bounces a shot somehow. Good lord. Half HP thin there. Go. We got Mark Beagle off there. Panther 4 trying to deal with all those shots there. Pack 40 turning about him. Oh dear, Mark Beagle on the Panther 4. Surrounded by the T 45s again. He just lacks the number to really lay down sufficient firepower here. And that's why you need double Stoops because the Stoops, they're basically the only thing can lay down enough firepower to, you know, compete with the Russian number of tanks and the, for the map now to their high health. He's now got an A Stoop, which is great, even higher rate of fire, but he's lost his Panther 4. There's still a lot of Guardsmen to deal with, though he seems to have extinguished a Guard Sport, so that's a nice thing for you. We need to fix up the stronger shirts and need to bring up more. T-45, they're going to the base here. Need to be careful with the Stug. Scheiße. Need to get the Gunnadies on. He was too slow to get out in the distance. Oh no. Knocking out the A Stug. That's a definite win there for Who Run Bartas. I mean, he's not got the armor advantage. And more importantly, Joe's got no immediate count. He's going for another Panzer IV, though. That definitely feels like a bad choice here by Joe at the moment. Nice versus the infantry, but he's just not very good versus the T-35, so as we've seen here, and he just needs something with a firepower to genuinely threaten those tanks, and the Panzer IV is not that solution. 2-2 hanging out in the West, the 11 kills, Veteran 3, MD-4-2 being held forts with a few gun that is then tow. Three hundred and seventeen versus sixty-seven. Joe still has the lead in victory points, but in other departments he is certainly a bit behind and struggling. Panther Formal Stunning is bringing up another MD forty two, having lost one here to Who Run Bartertown. Panther Four they're ready, seizing the Western fuel point and the victory point. Maximum advantage against the Gunnies and the Panzer Gunner Dealer. Good part. Try a Gunner Grenade if it doesn't just immediately retreat, which is more or less what I did. Then the center point that we see is for the Penal Troopers there. Guards are flanking up with maximum support here. Panzer Gunner there, half HV3 dealing with the Gunner in open ground. 
past 1k in the penal tooth again lacks the ability to really threaten the T3045. Start from the maximum 40 further pressing here to do 44 back. We got the pack 40 there, ace level. Uh, so far, oh, there we go, shooting. Target weak point here, but the T45 would good. See if we had a shoot to sort of assist. Panzer Force so far not responding. But Davis you can see that it has a very high rate of fire, so it's able to do a lot of damage to the T45 fast. Almost taken out there for the Panzer Force to be a bit faster. He might have been able to actually take it out, but instead, Panzer Force misses there. He's now calling in Mark Vehicle on it to ensure he does not try to pursue too far. Obviously, risking you know, losing the Panzer IV there. It seems like Joe does not care. He wants the T-45 dead. Willing to accept a lot of risks for it. That's definitely hazardous for his tank. Panzer IV, their main gun out. Took a lot of damage there. T-45 is then moving in for the Panzer IV. Could destroy the Panzer IV. He'd just leave Joe without any armor. Yeah, that's going to happen. There you go. Joe punished. A, he should have pulled back that Panzer IV faster, and B, he should actually go on for a Stuga. So right now we've got 278 versus 67. Huran Barton still got an nice amount of elite infantry. He's also more importantly got two tanks. Joe's got a 2 to 2. He's definitely got the infantry as well, but he just does not have the tanks. And we see here Joe is bringing up the second pack 40. To help contain the Soviet armor threat and the spam time for some more armor, though. I mean, if he goes with another Panzer IV, though, good lord, he definitely needs Stugs. It's ah, uh, that we should actually for ages ago instead of going for Panzer IV, gone for Panthers. Not quite getting the same level of firepower, but at least they're a lot more durable, which at least will sort of compensate for the lack of firepower. Instead, he just went for a lot of Panzer IVs. To two there opening up in the T foot foot five, not really doing a lot of damage. Machine in there wiped out. That's another machine in here for who run battle time to turn against Job. 248 versus 67. Quite otherwise, we got a sniper here for Job. Now that's pretty late for a sniper. And I feel like there's not particularly help him with the main issue, which still remains very much the T foot foot five. So I mean the sniper's not gonna somehow kill that. Doll packs opening on the T-45. Overall, I guess the move is because Joe's making a large strategic shift for uh, less mobile elements, but you know, in that regard, you still get something that have an impact here on who runs Barter Town. I mean, it could theoretically work out, but I'm not particularly super sold on it. Those guys have done some work here, and we got mines up here from Huron Bounty to further slow down any momentum that Joe might gain from any attacks. Joe is bleeding up profusely. We got 26 versus the 67. I mean, Joe still has the lead here, but it's not looking good otherwise. The enemy is reduced to 200 points. Joe Hengwes was there sniping away at the guardsmen. Very quiet otherwise. Is he lining up for base assault here? That'd be interesting. Got a lot of mines by here. Mine on mine. Field around the eastern victory point there. By who run by the town. Kills from England. T-Fed right moving in as well. The pine is falling back. We got an anti-tank right there lying about. Pack 40 quick shifting about. If they could just see. That course might also be a secondary purpose with the sniper for Joba at the moment. Just to help spot for the packs. Making better use of their full range. Meanwhile, who run by the time is bringing up more T 345s, he's bringing up more tanks. Now we're having work added here. More time on the way as well, though, for Joe. Definitely feels like a major shift in strategy, but he needs to be careful. He doesn't lose the sniper. Guys on the right in the west, but he's still far from any of the victory points. 155 versus 67. Mines further laid down here by Hulran Bartertown again. He's got a massive munition supply and he knows how to use it. Good work there. T-55 there managed to surprise the pack 40 crew here and wipe it out. Not good for for Joe. Recruiting it, but it's right from the T-4485. Third one there running for Hulran Bartertown. Alan moving in is have a few shots there at the pack 40 crew. As they frantically try to get the tank out. And there you go, pushing further ahead here. 
Ace, 2 to 2 moving in, 13 kills, heavy damage to the T3485. Really a lot of damage there, but uh, the other still bleeding out victory points. He actually needs to gain some ground. So far, the other is not doing that. We've got 116 versus 67. T-35 there hanging back in the west, also hanging back in the third one is needing repairs and is getting some recruit repairs. Ninety-eight versus sixty-seven. It's now getting out. We got a turnaround down there from Job. T-35 there could flatten the flank here if Job do some heavy damage. That looks like that's exactly what's happening. Joe committing his pack force to the flank, of course, means he's not exposed from other angles. But these are trying to go for the center victory point instead they're halted. Who we'll run by the time he's showing no mercy at all. We got 83 versus 67. 80 versus 67. More engineers still on the way through. We'll run by the time repairs tanks. Very good decision. Plus, of course, more mines, I imagine. 74. 71. Now, the Panther all day for Joe. That definitely feels like a. Non recommendable move there. The enemy is taking what we have secured. Additionally, I feel like Joe's suffering a bit from tunnel vision. He's focusing too much on the center and just attacking for a narrow arc rather than just trying to find the best angle to attack from now and, you know, somehow like to make some progress versus who run Barter Town. Panther Force almost on there for Joe. But he's still bleeding out. We got 51 versus 67. Now it's Joe that's actually behind the who run but despite having a lead for most of the match. He's, he's seemingly falling into a bit of a strategic pit here and he's struggling to get out of it. T-34-85 moving in there, flanking the pack 40, catching Joe of guard, exploring a bit his time visions and he's almost focusing then on the centre victory point but again he's ignoring the sides here. It's now moving up here, 9 kills, maximum in the way. That's of course the T-3045s. Ooh, nasty hit there. Other one could move from the other side. Again, the third one from the that side again. Panther on the way there. Heavy damage from the T-3045, but it's not enough. Mine goes off. He almost like the Panther is there. You go. Joe surrenders. A loss for the German army. A victory for the Red Army. So there you go. A nice little fight here on Crossing the Woods. Some nice play here and there. In the end, Joe's strategy sort of fell apart when he basically went for the wrong tank versus t 45s and also that tank that kind of just went away for no reason was also not good plus there's i think a case of tunnel vision there with job just not thinking about past to attack from rather just constantly trying to bash his way for the center which made it even easier there for who run barter down in the end to win the match so there you go hope you enjoyed this match hope you learned something from it. if you subscribe like share comment on it tell your friends tell your family but don't tell your enemies this is imperial danks and cheers thank you for watching you're all a wonderful audience hope to see you all tomorrow again for another episode